Okay, it's one thirty now. So, does class start at one thirty or one thirty-five? Should I be waiting? Looks like we have fifty-seven people. Is that everyone? Okay. Um, so, I'll ask a couple um, beginning questions so that people can still be joining us. Um, we'll be talking about board layout today. Um, in relation to InDesign. So I'm wondering how many of you currently use Illustrator rather than InDesign to do boards? Because I know, especially in second year, there are a bunch of people um, in my year that used Illustrator. Um, so in the chat, can you say whether you use Illustrator or InDesign? And then also how comfortable you are with InDesign. So like one, you've never used it. Three, you've used it once or twice. And then five, you're an expert. Okay, it looks like we have kind of a mix and a bunch of uh, beginners to InDesign and lots of people who are using Illustrator. So I don't blame you for um, not using InDesign. Um, there are a couple things that if you don't know how to do them, they're really hard in InDesign, InDesign and um, it makes it really annoying to start out. But I hope to show you how to do those things. Um, those couple things, and then also what InDesign does, which is better than Illustrator. Um, and at the same time, show you how to make better boards. So it looks like we have almost 70 people. Um, I'm guessing that's pretty much everyone. I'll go ahead and start. Um, if at any point you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I'll be sharing my screen, so I'll try my best to check for questions in the chat. Um, but you can also shout them out. Um, and let me know if you want me to slow down or go faster. So um, we'll start just by opening InDesign and you'll come up, it'll come up with this new document screen if you cr press create document. Um, there are a bunch of presets, but the things that really matter are over here on the right side. Um, automatically, it has picas as the units. I'm sure that's a publishing um, unit that they use. I've heard it's like a sixth of an inch, but I don't need to use it. I usually use inches. You can use whatever measure you want. Um, and you can put in the width and height. Uh, facing pages is um, whether you want it to open like a book or to have pages one after the other, um, which are all the same. I'll keep phasing pages for now. Um, you can also choose the columns. So it'll set the, it'll kind of create guides for where columns would be. So I'll have two columns and you can change the margins and everything. The bleed and slug are publishing terms for like what you want on the outside of the sheet, but that's not incredibly important for us. So I'll create a new document. And you can see on, um, InDesign looks a lot like Illustrator and functions kind of similar. So you have tools over here and panels over here and your tabs. Um, if you'd like to have the um, same tools at the top, you can go to Essential Classic at the top here. Um, I find that I don't usually need that, so I'll put it away and just go to Essentials. If you don't have any of the panels that I'm using, um, available on this side, you can go to uh, window and then all of your panels are here. So um, if you click one, it'll bring it out. And you can, of course, just like all the other um, Creative Suite programs, you can move them around, you can move them to different um, places. Um, 
just like normal. Um, so we've created a document and um, we now have one page and maybe we want three pages. So I, there are kind of two um, types of pages. There are the actual pages where you're putting your files and your uh, images and things. And then there are the master pages. So the master pages are what you want on every page. Often that's um, a page number or your name or something like that. Um, it's especially helpful, maybe not when you're making boards, would you want to master? But um, if you're making some kind of booklet um, for an architecture project or something else, um, you probably want to master to have page numbers and things. Um, so to add pages, you'll go to the bottom of the pages um, panel and you can just add as many pages as you'd like. Um, if you want to add, so I'll add a um, page number. If I double click on the master page, I'm editing the master and you can see it's the A master and there are A's next to each of these pages. So they're using the A master. Um, and I'll go, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but if I go to type and, oh, I need to create a text box. We'll talk about all of this later, but um, insert special character and markers and current page number. Then it'll show me a is the master, so it's showing me the page number of the master right now. Um, and if I hold down Alt and click and drag, I can move a page number to the other side. You'll see that because it's like a book, you might want page numbers on one side and the other side. Um, so it'll change that separately. So when I go back to the actual pages, here are the masters and here are the actual pages, um, it'll show me one, two, three, and there are different sides of the facing pages. Um, so we've created pages. We can also, if you wanted a title um, page to be different, if you didn't want it to have um, page numbers, you can go to, you can click on the A master and create new, and then you'll have a B master and you can change that master to whatever you'd like. And you can also add pages to the actual pages. Um, you can also move the pages around. So if I, um, I can move four to go to three, I can move two up to one. Um, this is the first thing that gets a little bit confusing. So if you right click, there are these two checks that are allow document pages to shuffle and allow selected spread to shuffle. And this will kind of, um, it'll make it so that it's like automatically pushing things to where it thinks you want them. But often when you're creating boards, you don't want that. So um, I will usually uncheck those and um, then I'll be able to move things around as I'd like. So um, if I move something right next to, if I move something right next to a page, it'll add it to that page. And then if I move it far away from a page and it creates that extra line farther out, it'll add it to the next spread. Is everyone clear on uh, moving the pages around? Any questions? I don't see any. Um, the other thing is um, page sizes. So we can always go back and at the beginning, we had that eight and a half by 11. If we wanna change all of the pages, we can go to document setup, file document setup and the width and height and the margins and everything else are here. And we can adjust it here for everything. We can also adjust it on a specific page with the tool right next to create new page is edit page size. Uh, we can do a custom size and the width and height and whether it's horizontal or vertical. So if we change it to tabloid, it'll make that page bigger. Um, often for um, boards, uh, 72 by 36 by 72 is just kind of the standard. 
And I think especially when um, we're virtual and we're presenting on a computer, um, that size doesn't really mean anything. And I think we should probably get away from that, especially while we're um, online. So um, maybe one page is uh, 40 inches by 40 inches because you're drawing a square and you just want to show a square drawing. Um, and then your next one is really uh, tall and thin. Um, I think it's fine to not have all the same um, page sizes, um, especially when you're not printing them out. Of course, you have to make sure that um, if you're printing them out, then 40 inches is your maximum on the page wide. Um, but if you're not, then it doesn't really matter. And they should, the page size should conform to um, your ideas and your drawings. For my last um, project, Yasmin was my um, studio instructor, so she might remember. Um, but I did the, as I talked about, I did different size pages and um, the, uh, so you're kind of, um, I made all of my drawings conform to um, the sizes I wanted, and then I placed them in the pages that fit those sizes. Some are more square, some are rectangles. And when you're online, it's just um, the size of your screen. So after you've created the pages that you want, um, you have to link your documents. And um, pages are like a little bit um, better than an Illustrator, but links are where uh, InDesign is much better than Illustrator. Um, so to place a document, we'll go to File, Place, or you can do Command-D or Control-D if you're on a PC. Um, I'll find some images from earlier in the semester. Um, and you can also just drag files into InDesign and usually that'll work, but often I want to, um, show the import options when there are multiple pages on an illustrator document or something, I'll want to show the options. So I'll check that. And you can only do that when you place a document. Um, also remember that if you want to replace something, we'll come back to this. Uh, you can check the replace selected item. So I'll open it and it'll. Um, open with the options. There are a couple important options. First pages, so the artboards on Illustrator will transfer to these pages. So I can make a range of one comma four to five, and that'll only bring pages one, four, and five. Um, there are different crop options. The other really interesting option that I think a lot of people don't know about is layers. So if I want one drawing as a cover of a um, board and then again showing the layer the um, the text and every more detail I can check certain layers to show in the drawing for the cover and then check other layers um, make them hidden or not hidden for the detailed drawing and um, it'll update update that in InDesign but keep it the same in Illustrator um, so that can be really helpful and you can only get to that when you go to file place or command D rather than dragging it in. Um, make sure when you're updating link, keep layers, visibility overrides if you want that. So this is, uh, I've imported three pages, so it should give me three separate um, things to click. I'm just clicking anywhere. Um, And I'll go to a document I created for my DD review this year. Um, another tip for plans and sections and things. I think I, until maybe third year, I was really confused as to what the best way to do text was because um, there are text tools in InDesign, which we'll talk about in a little bit, which are really helpful. Uh, they have a lot more control than an Illustrator. Um, but often I would take Illustrator documents and export them separately to go on my website or something like that. And um, then the text wouldn't be there if I did it in InDesign. And it's really hard 
to move but move um, items like copying groups of text between InDesign and Illustrator um, because I guess they're coded differently in things. Um, so what I've um, come up with is I think if if there are text things that are um, corresponding to an image. So if they're labeling something on the image, if they're labeling, labeling a road, um, they should be in Illustrator because uh, those things correspond to the image. And if the image moves over, you want those text items to move over too. If you export it to your website, you want those text items to export too, probably, or you can turn them off in Illustrator. The things that are anchored to the outside though, so this uh, site plan label is um, always supposed to be half an inch up and half an inch over from the side of this drawing. So I want to add that in um, InDesign instead of Illustrator because that the, um, the edge of this drawing could change and um, then I would have to move this back in Illustrator. So um, labels and things, I add in Illustrator and um, titles, I add in InDesign. The most confusing thing about InDesign, I think, is the frames. And I think this is what turns a lot of people off to InDesign. So if there's one thing you remember today, make sure you remember this. Um, the, there are two kind of frames. When you import something into InDesign, it kind of automatically gives it a mask. So, um, this blue frame is the mask. If I edit it, it'll mask whatever is behind it. So just it'll crop the edge to whatever it is. If I click it again, double click it, um, I'll see an orange frame. And that's the actual image. So I'll hold shift and change it. And it'll change the, um, it'll make the image smaller or larger. But then out here, I still have the blue frame, which is the mask. So usually you wanna move both of those together. And this is the thing that um, people learning InDesign don't realize. If you hold Command and Shift, I mean, Shift because you want the image to scale proportionally, but Command is what moves them both together. Of course, it's Control probably on a PC. Uh, you can move both frames at the same time. Oh, oops. When you double click, that doesn't work anymore. You have to get like click off of the item and then click it once more, command shift and do that. And it'll move both at the same time. You can also just move it. And, um, but it is convenient to have a mask there. So if I wanted this to only go to the one page, I could easily mask it without having to have any extra steps. And if I just wanna move the inside without double clicking, I can click on this circle and that'll move the inside. Um, so uh, in Illustrator or in Photoshop, I like to um, make things the right size for InDesign. That way, when I import it into the InDesign, I don't have to scale it at all. So let's see how well I did when I imported these um, or when I made these drawings in Illustrator. I would say I failed at um, scaling this correctly um, because it's much longer than my page. Um, so now I have to scale this in InDesign which means if I labeled anything in InDesign, then those labels might be a different text size. But if I had made this drawing just as wide as I wanted it in InDesign, then the text could have been um, the correct size, um, even though it's an illustrator for InDesign so that it matches all the other text. Um, finally, with links, there's the link panel and that's where you can edit all the links that you already have. Uh, so these three documents I imported, um, if I save one of them in Illustrator, um, then it'll show up here as a yellow warning icon. And if you double tap that, it'll relink the document 
um, and it'll take the changes from Illustrator and apply them to the copy in InDesign. You can also relink the document. So um, if you move the document, if you move the Illustrator document somewhere else in your uh, folders, then it won't be able to find the document. So you'll have to relink it and you'll have to find the same document again, or you can find a different document if you want to replace it. Um, and make sure if you're using iCloud Drive or OneDrive and things similar, you have to have it downloaded, otherwise it won't see the file. So um, make sure you download the thing um, from the cloud before you relink it. You can also embed on the links file. So if you right click and click embed, embed link, um, that file will, a copy of the file will be put into the InDesign file itself. Right now, it's just telling um, the computer to look at, to go to the Illustrator file and get that data whenever it needs it. Um, but this would copy the data. Usually you don't need to do that because um, you're trying to save space. Um, the InDesign file is really small because it's just a, a bunch of links from other places. Um, but if you're embedding all of that data into the actual file, then it gets a lot bigger. So now in addition to um, drawings, there are other things that we have to add. Um, there are, um, the easiest is probably the frame. So the frame is kind of like the blue crop box minus the image inside. If I create a frame over here, it's just an X. And it doesn't actually, if you printed this or something, it wouldn't show anything. It's not, nothing is in that frame yet. Um, but this is really useful if you uh, do command D or file place um, and you click replace selected item that the image that you place will go into the um, frame exactly where you want it. So it's really convenient to be able to plan out a board. You can plan out a board with frames and then replace those frames with um, drawings that you finish the drawings or not even as you finish the drawings, as you have a drawing, and then you can update the link um, every time you um, update the drawing and the link will automatically update. The shape tools in InDesign are a lot simpler than in, in Illustrator, but they're pretty similar. Uh, so if you click and hold on the rectangle tool, you also have an ellipse for circles um, and you have the pen tool and the line tool. The pen tool uh, being the freeform line. Um, and the same similar stroke tools. So I can make the stroke different. And uh, the color, the color uh, is down here as well. So it's kind of like in Illustrator, but a little bit simpler. Um, I think you you should try to stay away from adding shapes in um, InDesign as much as possible, just because it's not as good of an interface as an Illustrator. The two things that I often add in InDesign are um, north arrows because those are pretty to, pretty easy to add. Um, just a path tool up into the side, or a circle and a line, um, and those go with the title. So if if the title moves, that should move. So if I'm adding the title in InDesign, I want to add the North Arrow in InDesign as well. The other thing I sometimes add in InDesign are the section lines. So if I know a section is something I might not put on my website or um, something that's not integral to the, um, the drawing, then I'll add it in InDesign so the Illustrator file doesn't have, and I can take the Illustrator file and do whatever I want to it, and that section line won't show up. The hardest thing about that is that you have to make sure that the section line is actually where the section is. Um, so often I'm moving it a couple of pixels up and to the side, depending on um, where exactly the section was taken. Um, are there any questions so far? Oh, one thing in the chat.
Yeah, um, definitely portfolio. Um, I think often I don't think enough about my portfolio um, when I'm deciding page sizes and when I'm doing um, things in general. Um, but I think like uh, using the tech or adding text in Illustrator can help um, when you're doing portfolio things. And page sizes should also be something you think about. That's a good point, uh, Sandra. The other thing about shapes is opacity. This is another thing that in InDesign kind of falls down on. Um, if you go to object, effects, and transparency, that's how you can get to um, opacity. And um, it's a lot harder to do than in Illustrator, but you can still do it. That's object, effects, transparency. Um, but for all of the tools that InDesign lacks for shapes, it excels in text. Um, so uh, for each text box, there are um, four different text panels. There are the character ones, so that's dealing with the actual words and the text itself. So it's the font and the size and the spacing between lines. It's important that if you're changing the font to change the spacing between lines too, because often those will get um, out of sync. The paragraph is the um, right or left aligned and the indents. Um, often hyphenate will be selected. This is another thing that people get frustrated on InDesign about. Um, often hyphenate is selected by default. So um, if you're getting a bunch of hyphens at the end of a line, um, usually I don't want that. Um, so I'll go to paragraph and turn off hyphenate. The other two things um, are just like in Word and Pages and Google Docs, you can have styles. I've found that a bunch of people don't know what these are. Um, so I'll show you in um, Google Docs. Um, right under normal text, you can have like a title and a heading and things. And if I change something to a heading, it'll automatically change the formatting and the size and everything about that text. And then if I, um, if I want the heading to also have an underline, I can, um, I can update heading one to match and it'll make all of the other headings that same way. Um, it's a really useful tool in word processing as well as in InDesign. So um, I guess there's a tip that you can take to other programs, um, but the, it's the same thing in um, InDesign. There are character styles. So that's the specific words. If you, when you bold something, if you want to also change the color and things, uh, you can make a character style. And if you want to change the entire paragraph, so if you want headers and then body text and things like that, you can um, change those. And if I want this paragraph to also be a header, I just click it and it changes the entire paragraph to whatever I want. And the only thing different about um, Word compared to InDesign is that there are just so many options on InDesign for what you want. So tabs, formats, um, literally anything you could think of. Um, if you want to change the color of the text, um, if you are on the direct cell or any of the selection tools and you select it, it'll change the text box. So um, remember to click the text tool and like start editing the text, select some text, and then that'll show the um, text color. So it changed the text color rather than the text box color. Um, the other thing about text is um, fitting the text to the, um, the text box. So um, I can make this text box bigger or smaller and the text will automatically um, align like a cross. Um, if I want to, uh, if I want to type on this text and then the same text to continue on the next page, I'll click this 
button at the bottom right corner. And you'll see that it kind of has some text that's going to continue to the next page. And I'll click on the text, the next text box that I want it to link to. So now instead of having one text box here and one text box here, it's kind of like one text box together that's separated. So if I type here, it'll affect the text in the next text box. That's really convenient when you're making a book um, like this. All of these text boxes from column to column and then from column to next page are connected. Um, and if you uh, don't want linked text and you have text like this, but um, now you're trying to make the text box fit to the text and you can't get it. Um, if you do command alt C, I guess that's control alt C on a PC, you can also go to um, object fitting frame con frame fit frame to content. Um, that'll make that'll uh, kind of condense the frame to exactly what the content um, is. So if I have, it's the same thing for just a smaller text box. Um, let's see. Here's one. Um, if I have this text box and it's much bigger, if I do command option C, it'll fit the frame exactly to the edges of the text. Any questions so far? A couple more tools. Um, so if you have an image, I would really recommend uh, making your images in Illustrator exactly what you want them in InDesign because then the text is the same and you're not having to scale at all. But if you do need to scale, um, it's nice to use the scale. Of course, you can do command shift and um, scale just freeform, but you can also use the scale tool. So I click, if I click the scale tool, I can change the anchor point. So um, now it'll scale around this anchor point rather than around the center. Shift will keep it proportional. You can also um, click Alt and then click or hold Alt and then click and you can scale by a percent. So if I want to scale it 50% and they're linked with that um, chain. So that means that they'll, it'll scale in both directions by that much. Um, and I can preview it. It'll make the entire image smaller by 50%. So if you're going from, if you have a quarter inch scale drawing, you can make that an eighth inch scale drawing without having to guess based on the sizes. Um, a couple other tools, um, also in the scale, if you click and hold scale, you can rotate and shear and free transform. Um, a couple other tools, the eardropper tool can, or eyedropper tool can be pretty convenient. Um, so oops. if I uh, want this, it'll tell me that uh, it's taking colors from a vector image, but that's okay. Um, if I want that specific blue to apply to some text, then I can um, apply that text. Um, and the color theme tool, which I actually discovered last night, is you can click on an image and it'll um, take colors from that image. Um, and then you can apply each of these colors separately. Um, if you want to, uh, let's go back to the normal eyedropper. If I selected this blue um, and then I wanted to select a new color, I would hold, hold Alt and uh, I can select something else. Rather than it pasting the color, it'll select another color to paste. Um, and just a few more tools um, or right clicks. If you uh, click on an image and right click, you can transform it and flip. Often that's useful for um, images that are uh, can be in either direction and maybe um, like in this image, um, if I wanted the text to be over here, it would be convenient to flip the entire image. So I'll flip it horizontally and then the text could be on this side. Um, 
you can also uh, do a range so that'll bring the image to the front, just like um, in PowerPoint and other programs um, and in Illustrator. Um, and the last thing with the right click is you can lock something. So that'll mean that even if you click on it, it won't move anywhere. That's convenient, especially for something in the background. Now for the layout of your board, um, your professors will love if you use guides. Um, so you have these um, margin guides um, and the column guides that you're adding at the beginning. You can also drag if you drag from the ruler out, you can create lines which won't show up when you preview or when you print, um, but which can help you line things up. So if you have a common, if you have a text box that you want to go here, and then you also want your image to only go, oh, it's locked now. If you want this image to only go to here, then that guide will help you align those things. Um, you can also, create a grid of lines. So if you go to layout and create um, guides, you can create a number of columns and rows and it'll create a grid of lines, which um, can help you um, with, with uh, spaces between them, which can help you lay, lay out grids of things. Um, and uh, another tool I found, uh, I actually found this yesterday as well, um, is the gap tool. Uh, if I if I select over a gap between two items, I can drag and it'll continue the same gap. because this is uh, locked again. I can move the two things with the same gap. Um, so it could be convenient if you're um, trying to move a gap, but keep it the same width. Um, and finally, the last layout tool is the align panel. So over here, um, you have all of the aligns, just like in Illustrator, uh, you can align um, Let's see. You can align two images to the left or the right or the top or the bottom. You can also distribute and distribute spacing. Uh, so the spacing will be um, how much space is between each drawing. Um, and remember, remember to use the align tool, align to tool. Um, so you can align to a selection or to um, the entire page. And if you're aligning to a page, then when you align to the center, it'll align to the actual center of the page rather than just um, averaging all of the files. Um, another thing that gets people a little bit um, annoyed at InDesign is the um, fact that spell checking doesn't automatically happen. Um, so often there will be people who have a board which um, doesn't, has some misspellings and it's because it doesn't have um, dynamic, dynamic spell check automatically um, on. So if you go to edit uh, spelling and dynamic spelling, it'll turn on the normal like red underlines uh, and that can be really helpful um, just to catch errors that you make um, and if you want to review it at the end you can also do command i for check spelling um, but i find dynamic spelling is just a lot easier and then i don't have to remember to check the spelling every time i export um, and maybe the last thing that people get really confused about is the view so you've been seeing this drawing um, which looks really bad quality. Um, and it's not like that on the Illustrator document, but
but InDesign will make the files really small and provide kind of thumbnail images so that you can see what file you're working with, um, but it won't make your computer really slow. So if you want to see what the actual drawings will look like when you export, um, you go to view and then there are a couple different things you can do. Uh, screen mode will turn off the um, guide. So it'll look like what it'll actually look like when you export. If you go to preview, it'll just show the images without the margins and without the frames around the files and things. Um, you can also go to presentation and that'll just turn basically like a PDF into um, the view of your file. Um, you probably don't want to do this for a presentation because it can be slow like you're seeing right now. Um, here it is. Um, but it's just it just uh, shows your images like a presentation. Um, and then the display performance it is what will change the um, how fast or slow your display goes. So if you turn on fast display, I was on typical display. Um, so that was like a kind of bad image quality, but still very visible. Fast display is just uh, gray X's. So um, if you have like a ton of images, that can be pretty useful. Um, the other thing is the high quality display, which can really lag your computer, but which will show the actual images. Um, and I will turn that off. Another way to get to that is overprint preview, which will do kind of both of those things. It'll turn on preview so it gets rid of the margins and it'll turn on high quality display, but that can really uh, slow down your computer too. If you have high quality display on and your images still aren't um, high quality, it's probably because the links panel, um, one of your files hasn't updated or it can't find the file or something. Uh, so go to the links panel and you'll probably have a, um, caution sign that you can double click to update the file or relink the file. Um, and make sure that you don't have any of those um, unlinked files um, before you export because then it'll try to take the, um, the thumbnail to export and it won't be nearly the quality that you need. Um, so now for exporting, um, You can save, unlike an Illustrator, um, you can't save as a PDF just normally and continue to edit. So you save as an InDesign file, just like normal, or just like any other um, Illustrator or Photoshop file, um, just the format of InDesign. Um, that's for something on your computer. Um, if you want to send the InDesign file to someone else so that they can edit it, um, so you want them to be able to open in, open the file in InDesign and still be able to move all of the frames around and change the text and everything. Uh, you can go to package. So I was talking about the links and how you didn't want to embed them because that would create a copy in the actual file, which would make the file a lot bigger. That's exactly what package does. So it'll take the InDesign file and then add, it'll put it in a folder and add a bunch of, um, Illustrator and Photoshop and other files that it links to in the file. And you can move that entire folder and give that to so, someone else and they'll be able to open the file um, just like you could. Um, but that's only useful if they wanna edit it. If you're just trying to export, which is usually what you're trying to do, you'll go to export. Um, you can save to a PNG or a JPEG, um, but often you'll be saving to a PDF. Um, and then it comes up with an export dialogue. Um, you can choose the pages and um, export as pages or as spreads. So spreads are the facing pages. So if you want both pages of a book to export together, then you can select spreads. You can also, um, in your um, PDF viewer, uh, do the same thing. So. Uh, Right now I have all of the pages uh, linearly. If I, in preview, it's uh, command three or view um, two pages. 
you can do the same thing in um, Acrobat, but um, this way I can have them lin linearly like all 10 pages, or I can um, open them as spreads. So I usually export as pages rather than as spreads. And then we'll do this in the PDF viewer. Um, and the other thing you can do in the export window is you can do a lot of the compression things that you can do in Acrobat. Um, so if you want it to be a much, much smaller file, you can do that here, or you can export it as a regular PDF and then um, reduce file size PDF in um, Acrobat just like normal. Um, any questions? Oh, lots, lots of things in the chat. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, preparing text in Word is also a good idea because it won't show as much spell check as um, other things, as like Word and um, pages do. Um, but uh, yeah, I can go over relink in a little bit more detail. Um, if this is the file that I have imported, so if I move it to, um, I'll move it out to my desktop. Um, it'll have this uh, question mark here. And if I double click, it'll ask me to locate what it thinks, where it thinks the file is. So I'll just have to go to um, my desktop and uh, it was right at the top, but if you find it, um, you can still show import options and things. Um, and if you click this, if there, if you've moved Often, so you'll have like a bunch of files, a bunch of things that are linked in an InDesign file, and you move the entire folder of files. Um, so if you click the search for missing links in this folder, if you have like a, well, I'll just open that and it'll relink them. If you have like a bunch of, um, a bunch of files that are in the same folder and none of them are um, linked anymore, it'll search that entire folder for files to link. And so it can um, improve the speed of relinking a lot. Um, oh, you have to watch out a little bit. I was just clicking through those, but I wasn't selecting the right page. So um, this should have been page uh, five, I think, but instead I selected page one. Um, so it relinked it with another file which is also something you can do if you wanna change the um, file you can, or if you wanna change what's showing up, you can relink it to another file. Um, but if you want the same file, you have to make sure that the page number is correct. Um, still has good image quality while also small enough file size. Um, so often I'll do that in Acrobat instead of in InDesign because I'll want to see how big the file is and then I'll, um, change the file size so I can show you what I do to, um, oh, this is the problem. Um, because my files are in iCloud drive, it's, um, and they're uploaded and not on my computer, I can't open them. But one second. Let's do this one. Sorry about this. I need to find uh, something that I can actually reduce um, well. Let's try this one. Um, so I'll go to um, 
X or save as other is uh, where you'll find the reducing size. Um, this is useful not only to upload to concept board, but also to um, print. If you're if it's taking like a really long time to print something, uh, you can reduce the size and it'll go a lot faster. Uh, so reduce size PDF, retaining the existing compatibility is usually fine. Um, and it'll tell me to save it somewhere. Oh, and it's going to do it automatically. Um, I think I didn't select one of the options. Here it is. Um, reduced file size. I was confusing the two. Reduced file size will do what it thinks automatically. Optimized file size. Um, so save as or save as other optimized PDF will let you choose what you want. Um, if you want it to be really small, you can change these values. So it'll take any images that are above 450 pixels per inch down to 300 pixels per inch. Um, and same for grayscale and monochrome, it does it a little bit higher. Um, but you can change these to, usually you should try it at 300 and that'll still be high quality enough on concept board. If you want it to be really small, you can reduce that to like 150 or something, um, but you should try not to do that. Uh, you can also um, discard um, images that are not showing in things. Um, but this is the main thing that'll get your file size a lot smaller, um, making the images, instead of being 600 pixels per inch down to 300, um, that can do a lot. Um, Are you, Sandra, are you talking about um, this or some other like converting PDFs to um, what? Okay, perfect. Um, I have a couple other tips for board layout um, just in general. Um, and a bunch of them I've kind of gone over in a little bit of detail, but I'll um, say them explicitly. Um, so I think it's often helpful to start your board first, make an InDesign file, and then make Illustrator files, then like make the InDesign file, then export from Rhino or Revit or something. Um, and uh, that way you can play, plan the size of how big a plan will be, how big um, sections will be, so that they align and things. Um, and to do that, um, yeah. What, I'll explain packaging after um, I talk about these couple things. Um, so to do that, um, I'll like use frames, those uh, just the blank X's um, to map out a board. So if I want a plan there and a section there, um, but I can also often I'll have like the concept um, board or a schematic board. And I'll use the schematic drawings in a DD board, just so I know this is like, automatically I have a plan and I have a section um, and those sections and plans will change, but I can use the schematic sections um, as placeholders for the DD sections. Um, and I like to do that more than frames because if you're using frames, you don't exactly know which one is for what. Um, I like to keep the, um, so I'll do the text labels on, um, on Illustrator like I was talking about, but I'll also kind of keep them away from the edge. So if I have to crop something in, I'll still be able to do it. Um, so if this needed to come in, it wouldn't upset any of the edges. Um, 
make sure that you're aligning things. Um, your professors will like you to create grids and things, but sometimes there are some things that um, you won't be able to align with the tools, um, with the align tools. Uh, so an image like this, I'll change it to high quality display so that you can actually see what it looks like. An image like this is a little bit off center. So if I choose to distribute it um, between these two files, uh, it looks like it's a little bit um, under and that might be because the frame isn't exactly right. So you should make sure that they're the same spacing is below and above the image and between the image and the frame. Um, but also this mountain is kind of making this side look a little bit bigger. So maybe I want to move it a little bit over um, just until it looks normal. Um, and maybe a couple of points up or something um, just so that uh, it's more important that something looks correct than that it's actually mathematically between the two things. Um, so don't be afraid of moving things so that they look right instead of using or using the alignment panel and then moving them just a little bit so that they look a little bit better. Um, make sure that your images are relating to the ones nearby um, and that they're not just placed there. So um, last semester I was uh, I had these two details which I put next to each other so that they kind of aligned across the um, file or across the page. On this page, I um, in Illustrator, I added these lines which connected the um, bays of the section to the site plan and they the lines even curved um, so that they kind of go from the section to the site plan at an angle. Um, you should allow yourself to break guides when um, with reason. Uh, so, This image has this uh, uh, post that's kind of coming out. And I think it's okay that it's going past the margin uh, because that post is kind of a small piece and it's kind of coming out of the image. So I thought that, that was an acceptable thing to push past a guide. Um, hierarchy, make sure that some images are bigger than others so that people know where to look. Um, it's especially important when we're presenting virtually that you have uh, some bigger images and maybe three images at the bottom, which are showing that the one bigger image is more important than the three at the bottom. Um, and you can always zoom in. So um, when you're online. Um, now, when we get back to printing, make sure that you arrange your drawings so that the eye level has the um, drawings that are the most important. Um, so especially if you have a drawing that you don't like especially much, you can put it at the bottom um, or even the top so that you keep like the center space um, as the most important. It's also important that if you have a really nice section and you want it to be across the entire bottom, you have to remember that that section might not be as visible because it's at the bottom. Um, so think about bringing that section to the middle and going across or something like that. Um, you also should think about how you're going to present. This is very different online versus uh, in print. So when you're walking across your board in print, you might go linearly from one drawing to the next across, um, or maybe you jump around or you're going to a central image and then you um, point to a couple other images, um, but you mainly focus on one central exploded axon or something. Um, when you're printing, you can definitely arrange drawings between two boards. Um, so this section is going between the two um, pages and it'll print like that. Um, but when I print it, I have to make sure that um, it's okay that the, those two pages might be slightly off um, because it's really hard to pin up, especially under a time crunch, exactly perfectly. And you have to make sure you're cutting the um, margins off. Um, plan your diagrams about around how much leftover space you have. Uh, so if you have a plan and a section and you have a space over here, um, maybe you need a diagram for that. Um, and I mean, you should be doing the diagrams that are helping your project, um, but sometimes uh, a diagram can be a square rather than a rectangle or a horizontal rather than vertical. And that can make you allow you to fill your space. Um, and 
align things with the edges of things. If when you're in doubt, in doubt just align edges so that um, it's not just randomly placed. At least there's a grid that's creating um, some kind of order. Um, so lastly, for packaging, unless there are other questions, um, like I said before, there's export and there's package. Export is to print or to send somebody to look at. Um, package will take your InDesign file and allow you to, um, it'll allow you to give it to somebody and they'll be allowed to edit it. Um, so it'll take the InDesign file, put it in a folder and take all of the links from your computer and put those links in a folder or put the files that relate to those links in a folder and it'll link everything correctly so that um, that InDesign, the package InDesign file can be opened and all the links are still there, even if it's on a different computer. Um, so it's pretty easy to do. Um, you just package, um, you can change a couple settings, but generally they're good. Package and um, you have to save it. And uh, you'll create a package folder um, and just click package and it'll create a folder. Then you can um, zip that folder or just up the, upload the folder to box or um, something else to share it with somebody um, so that they can edit it. Are there any other questions? I think I'm pretty much at time. I hope I saw everything in the chat. Uh, I think I was watching it. If there are no questions, I think you can head off to studio. Thanks for listening. And I hope, I hope those of you who are in Illustrator find that um, InDesign has benefits and that you uh, can um, overcome the couple of things that are annoying about it. So good luck on your boards. Thanks. So I just wanted to say my students, we meet in five minutes and thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, James. Bye.